This video is brought to you by my supporters on Patreon, Buy Me A Coffee, NASIO and YouTube. If you wish to support me, you can find the links below. Sick and tired of these pseudoscience peddling videos all over your social media homepage? Why do we make a game out of it? Introducing Spot the PS. Once you're a pro at this game, you'll start spotting fallacies and every rational thing on your homepage. Never again will you be misled by misinformation on social media. Never again will you fall for baseless beliefs that lead you nowhere. Never again will you walk into the trap of scammers that are everywhere in the country. What are we waiting for? Let's learn to play Spot the PS. My name is Pranav and you're watching Science Is Dope. I have to first give credit to this channel, J -J Jack's Films, who gave me the idea for this game and I decided to make my own version. Spot the BS is a game of bingo that you can play live with me or on your own or with a friend. It's really versatile. You can play it while watching a pseudoscience or misinformation peddling video or a political debate or even an argument in the comment section. Anywhere where there's a possibility of an error in logical reasoning, this game can be played. Now, I've already been playing this game game over on my second channel. I even did a live stream playing this game with my viewers and it went really well. If you want to jump directly to that, the stream link is down in the description. I'll be doing more such streams soon and if you want to join that, just subscribe to my second channel. Once again, the link is right down there. Alright, now let's learn how to play. Most of you must be familiar with the game Bingo, where you have a 5x5 grid like this filled with numbers in a random order. Someone will be calling out numbers randomly and if you have that number on your grid, you just mark it. You just keep marking it on your grid till you have a row or a column or a diagonal and then you have Bingo and the first person to get a Bingo wins the game. Path the BS is exactly the same only instead of numbers, there are boxes that have common fallacies that people tend to make common biases that they have and the most often seen patterns of argument, bad arguments that they tend to bring in their statements. Oh, and also we have a 6x6 six six grid. When we play the game live, you will get a card with all these squares shuffled and you may have some boxes that I don't in my card and vice versa. And we're gonna watch the video live together and we're gonna spot the BS they have in their arguments and mark them one by one. When any of us, me or someone playing the game live with me gets a bingo, we call out bingo in the chat and you can share your card with me and we can verify it and see if the person won. Also, I'll keep updating the game. It was a 5x5 grid. I made it 6x6 and now there are images on those quests and when we encounter new fallacies, I'll keep adding them to the list. And that's it, simple yet powerful concept. Not only is this a game where you can have some actual entertainment from these misinformation peddlers, but you actually learn to spot the errors and fallacies these people make in their arguments. But to actually do that, you first need to learn what the fallacies are. I've provided a Google Doc below in the description where I've written down the meaning of every single fallacy in these boxes. Not only fallacies, these also include common biases and argument patterns that we've heard before. Just refer to the document if there's anything you need and we're ready to play the game. I will cover here some very common fallacies that you tend to hear. But before I do, let's talk about what a fallacy is. A logical fallacy is an error people make in their reasoning or logic behind their point because of which the conclusion they make may be wrong. A very simple example is this. See, uh, your idea of what is memory have to evolve. Right now, your idea of memory used to be, till recently, is just what you remember. But now your idea of memory has become more technology oriented. You use the word memory more with reference to your gadgets than to yourself these days. Your idea of memory has shifted that things can have memory. Hundred years ago, nobody thought things can have memory, isn't it? Here Sadhguru aka Jaggi is using two meanings of the word memory. One being the human capacity to remember things and the other being the storage capacity of devices like phones or hard disks. And he uses this to jump to the conclusion that just like we have memory, some things also have memory. 
This is an equivocation fallacy where you confuse two meanings of a word to justify your point. He makes yet another fallacy right after this. Now we're talking about water having memory. Why go in installments, water, fire, earth, this one, that one? Uh, let's go a little further. Water having memory itself is based on extremely flawed research. But for the sake of argument, let's just say water does have memory. What Sadhguru does right after this is, he generalizes to say that if water has memory, then fire has memory and earth has memory and everything has memory. This is called a hasty generalization fallacy. In both cases, all he had to do was back up his claims, which are both empirical claims by the way, with convincing evidence. Alright, now let's get to some common fallacies. Appeal to authority. This is when you say, hey, this well-repeated person said so, hence this is true. Nothing becomes true because a person said so, no matter how qualified they are, it has to have strong evidence backing it. For example, watch this. We literally found that quantum physics ki neev rakhne wale Erwin Schrodinger ne ek bar yahan par kaha tha ki the unity and continuity of Vedanta are reflected in the unity and continuity of wave mechanics. Now this is entirely consistent with Vedanta concept of all in one. अब ये शब्द यहाँ पर मेरे नहीं है, ये अरविंद शोडिंगर के हैं और आप लोगों को पता होगा शोडिंगर का कितना बड़ा कंट्रीब्यूशन वाज़ वन ऑफ़ द पिलर्स ऑफ़ क्वांटम थ्योरी। He is concluding in favour of Vedanta using Schrodinger as an authority, but showing no evidence for his conclusion. Appeal to tradition. This is when people say. According to this traditional medicine, this is true. Or according to my religion, this is true. Or according to this practice which we've been carrying out for thousands of years, this is true. When in fact, all you need to do is show strong evidence for something that is true. Here's an example. Dood ke saath, ye teen combinations aapne kabhi nahi lena hai according to Ayurveda. He doesn't provide any evidence in the whole video and just uses Ayurveda to justify his claims. And Ayurveda is traditional medicine which is based on zero clinical evidence. Appeal to popularity or the bandwagon fallacy. This is when someone says, hey, many people believe this, so this has to be true, instead of basing it on evidence. Here's an example. There must be some truth in that concept, which has caused so many books to be written on that concept, which has caused so many evolved people to turn to spirituality, so many evolved people to talk about karma so often. This is when someone says, hey, I believe this. If you think it's not true, then you prove it's not true. They're basically shifting the burden of proof onto you when it's the person who makes the claim who has to justify it. People who say that, you know, how can you prove that it exists? My question to you is how can you prove that it doesn't exist? This is when someone says, there must be some reason why this is true. I don't know the reason, but there must be some reason. They're appealing to the fact that they don't know the reason. There must be some truth in that concept. There has to be some truth. And if you're gonna switch off that possibility completely, you're limiting your own growth. This is when some people, instead of answering why they believe something, they ask, what about those guys, those Muslims and Christians, why don't you criticize them? It's easy to spot, just look for a what about in their uh, response. Uh, you'll often find these in my comments. This is Latin and it literally means at the human. It's when you throw a backhanded insult at a person and say that's why you're not believing them instead of showing evidence why they're wrong. While some people mistakenly believe that all insults are ad hominem attacks, it's not. It's only when you use the insult as a reason why they're wrong. Example, when someone says you're wrong because you're stupid or it need not have an insult at all. Remember, it means at the human. So it applies whenever you argue against the person instead of the argument itself. For example, you don't have any qualifications to be talking about this stuff. That's an ad hominem. Their qualifications are not what make them wrong. It's the evidence they bring. And this is nothing against people with qualifications. Qualifications help you know exactly what evidence applies where and what evidence to look for and where you can find them. 
a straw man is a replica of a man made of straw so it's easy to knock down the same way a straw man argument takes a point of disagreement misrepresents it into a form that can easily be debunked and debunks it while pretending they debunk the original argument aaj tak kisi bhi vyakti ne na kahani mein na mauqif ne likh ke bataya ki wo jangal mein kahin gaya tha kisi shehar mein gaya tha usne kisi bandar ko aaj bhi bante hue dekha ho ye kahi par nahi dekha gaya ki darwin ne is prakar ki jo theory di hai wo vyagyanik roop se bhi galat hai aur isne school aur college ke andar usko badal kar nahi hai jab se dharti par aadmi aaya hai shuru se hi aadmi hai aur aaj bhi hi rahega The theory of evolution never talks about apes that turn into humans right before our eyes but calling that evolution makes it easy to debunk I'd love to talk about every single fallacy there is but that would make this video very long so I've written everything down in a google doc below so you can always refer to that and play the game with me You don't you really don't If your purpose is to just identify it when you hear a bad argument, if you can tell that an argument hasn't been sufficiently backed up, like say with evidence, if it's an empirical claim or with proper reasoning that isn't fallacious, if you can recognize this, then you're good. You don't need to learn all these fallacies, their names by heart. These fallacies are just a way of making it easier to identify when a person has made a mistake in their reasoning. And also, I'm a nerd. I like learning stuff like these, and many of you find it fun too. And playing this game can make you very good at spotting bad reasoning. If you like my content, it would be really awesome if you can support me because that becomes my main source of income. You can either give me a one-time support using one of these options or you could give me continued support using these options for which you will get special perks that you see on your screen. I'd like to thank all my patrons who support me at the highest support tiers on Patreon and YouTube. I'll see you in the next one. Till then remember science is dope.